Are you a C-sharp developer who wants to start using functional programming, but you have trouble with all the super complicated and overly academic tutorials that have no practical value? After watching them, it's still unclear how you can actually use the concepts you kind of learned. If this sounds like you, then keep watching. This is the fourth video in my beginning functional programming in C-sharp series. My goal is to look at core functional programming principles and show you simple examples of how you can apply them to your C-sharp code right away. In this video, I want to look more specifically at a C-sharp feature, which gives us the power of functional programming to extend our .NET objects. That's right, we're going to combine object-oriented programming and functional programming. It's possible to use concepts from both paradigms. This gives us more tools and more ways to build the best solutions in a practical way. So during the course of this series, I've been using a function uh, that I made called print. And this print function uh, is an extension method that I created to be able to, to uh, serialize an object and print it to the screen. So what I want to do is go over how you create extension methods and then break up the extension method that I've made into uh, smaller pieces. And then we can have more of these reusable functions that we can uh, basically combine and chain and do those kinds of things. So in creating uh, extension methods, the rules for that are um, you need to have them inside of a public static class or a, a static. Uh, you could make it private if you wanted. Um, and each of the methods inside of that class need to be static. The thing that uh, kind of does the magic of extension methods is using this, uh, this keyword. And what that does is it says this argument is the actual object that I want this function uh, to extend. So in this case we're saying I want the I enumerable, which is a collection of T. T is some type, it could be any type. And that's what allows us to take our user's object, which is an I, uh, I enumerable, and we can use the method as if that object actually owned it. So let's look at breaking uh, this up into smaller chunks. So what we'll start with is uh, kind of going from the inside out. So now we have a function or a method that lets us take uh, some kind of object or some type of object and we can serialize it. Now let's do the same thing for the console uh, right line. So now instead of having to wrap our object in the uh, console right line, we can just call it directly off of the string that we are getting back from the serialize function. So extension methods are very powerful and they're used by the link queue uh, class library that comes with .NET. And if you've been developing in C-sharp, then you know, you probably know what link queue is. And link queue lets you do things, uh, basically, it gives you a whole bunch of extra methods that you can use on your collections. 
for example you have select where you can say I want to select a piece of each object so in this case we're saying for every user I just want to return a list or a collection of the first name so this would return a collection that is just the first name of each user of course um, other libraries that do this um, dapper is one um, so link queue and dapper are probably uh, two of the most popular NuGet packages in .NET uh, dapper lets you basically take your SQL queries and map them to your .NET objects it also gives you some uh, easier ways to run your SQL queries but it does that by extending existing interfaces existing classes you don't have to go in and change the internals of existing classes so this is a good technique to use it doesn't break the open close principle uh, in solid and if you're interested in making NuGet packages this is an awesome way to to do that dapper and link both do that uh, using extension methods. I want to show you one more uh, concept around extension methods and that's the fact that extension methods are just regular methods. What do I mean by that? Well I have a uh, let's say serialize that serialize function below. So what we could do is users dot serialize and we could serialize all our users but it's just a function so if we uh, if we reference our static class we can say extensions serialize and you can see in the parameter list it's saying yeah you can pass in some object of type T so if I wanted I could just use it like a regular function If I wanted to write that list, then I can just wrap it. So now we're going back to my previous video where I talked about, I think it was my previous video where I talk about composing functions. And you can do that with extension methods. Um, so for example, we can keep going. Now let's use the extension methods that are in link queue. So let's say we just want to select from our users their first name. Because select is a static method that's inside the enumerable static class. Again, we can use this extension method just like a regular method. So they're super flexible, you can use them in this way. If you're familiar with functional programming, um, you could create a pipe method where you could pipe in these functions um, or create other functions where you can chain them. So they're super flexible. You don't have to use inheritance or change the internals of your classes to add all this extra functionality. And they're interchangeable. You can, if I wanted, I could move these methods around uh, and order, order them differently. And it's super easy to do that. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up, subscribe for more videos, and please add some comments. Uh, if you have any constructive feedback, I'd love to hear it. Or if you love the video and want to just say why, uh, please go ahead and do so. Thank you so much.